Good morning and Happy New Year! Welcome to my kitchen. You're visiting the Neal's Homestead and I'm Jeanette. I use my cast iron skillet almost every day of my life unless I'm not home for some reason. I bought it new probably around nine or ten years ago and it's been well seasoned and done great for me. I hardly ever have anything that sticks but I have created an issue that's causing some stickage and some buildup on it on the inside and then over time I have buildup around the bottom part on the outside that I'm hoping to get off and I'm going to show you how I'm going to deal with it. Thanks for joining me. This bacon is absolutely great. I bought it at a store down at Versailles, one of the Mennonite stores down there. I bought a whole case of it and it's only costs 99 cents a pound. So um, a case of like 12 cost me $11 and something. And it's in uh, two pound, one and a half pound packages. And it's sweet barbecue. Uh, it tastes really good, but I think it's the sugar in it that creates a buildup in my pan. I have my pan situated so that you can get the reflection of the light on there and you can see this buildup that has been put there by cooking that bacon in my skillet. Now, I what I like to do is heat my skillet up and then from my kettle of simmering water, I'll pour it in there on my hot skillet. You wouldn't want to do this with cold water on a hot skillet or but as I move that around I can feel it loosen but I feel like it shouldn't build up like that on the bottom of my skillet it's just the sugar that's the problem and then as I pour it off there you can see all that caked on sugar that I rinsed off and then my skillet's clean But here's the other part that I want to show you. Over the years that I've been using my skillet, I've gotten all this buildup underneath. Now I do wash this bottom part with soap and water sometimes, but it doesn't really cut that carbonized stuff that's caked on there. So what I have in mind to do is to put my cast iron skillet into my wood stove onto hot coals. Now I know it's recommended to put a cast iron skillet into an oven that you're running through the self-cleaning cycle so I know it gets really really hot in there and I know that this in a hot wood stove was the way that people used to clean their cast iron but I also know that you need to be careful. You don't want your fire to be too hot and you kind of want it to be sitting level as possible in there. Now, some research that I've done, somebody said their cast iron skillet, after they did this, it turned kind of orangey-yellow, and another one said that it cracked. I think the only reason that it might crack, if you don't get it too hot in the first place, is if you try to take it out before it's fully cooled. So my intention is to build a good fire, have a good bed of coals that are sitting level, stick my pan into the fire and then just let the fire die down on its own and go cool. So let's get things started. Well it's morning. We had a pretty good bed of coals in the stove this morning but I've put some extra wood in there and now I need to let that burn down into some good coals. I don't think that I want an active blaze going on in there. I just want a really good bed of coals. My cook stove is glass top electric and one of the problems with having all that buildup on the bottom is that it smears up my stove all the time with uh, after it's been heated the I guess grease comes out of that stuff that's built up on the bottom and makes a mess on my stove now it's not something that ruins my life and if I take care of it and wipe it right up it doesn't make that big of a deal but when this bacon's through cooking I'm going to show you what it looks like the day I'm through with that bacon will kind of be a sad day because I've enjoyed it so much and it was such a good deal. But until I do, I have decided I'm going to use my 
um, stainless steel skillet. It also has to be cleaned, but I can just take an SOS pad to it and clean it really well. But for the rest of that bacon, I'm going to be cooking it in a stainless steel skillet. Okay, let me show you the goo on the bottom of this if I can. Well, see all that around there? That's what oozes out of the crusty stuff that's on the bottom of my pan. And that's what I want to get off of there. So old guy's sitting by the stove getting warm after he came in from doing chores. gonna look inside there. Ooh, that's hot. That is really hot. I've got a nice bed of coals right there, but I feel like it's too hot for my pan. So I'm gonna have to let that cool down just a little bit. And it's getting hot in this room too, I'll tell you what. My desk is right here beside the fire. Well, my stove is still plenty hot, but I think it's ready to put the skillet in. I'm going to turn it right side up because it's really the bottom that I want to be burned off more than the top. I want them to both be done, but the bottom more, so I want it right down against the heat. So the next step is to wait until the stove cools down. This thing's been cooking all afternoon and the stove is still pretty warm in there but I could I can touch the pan without burning myself but um, look at that it. it's really stripped down to rustiness and oh look at that hmm hope that's still okay all right I'm going to set it right here to cool a little bit more and then I'm going to take it outside. It's sat on top for a while so let's take it outside. And I laid a towel on my red metal table here. Turn it upside down and give it a look. There's still crusty stuff on there and that seems attached. This stuff is just turned to ash. I've got this grill brush that I'm going to brush it down with. Now over here, I think where it turned to ash, it looks like it must have been hotter there. But right here where it's not cooked off as good. I think it must not, the fire must not have been quite as hot there, but I still think I can get a lot of it brushed off. Well, I can definitely tell that this part was to the front of the stove where it wasn't getting as hot because it, it didn't burn that off of there. I think if I want it off without re-burning it, I'll have to get a chisel. Okay, let's turn it over and I don't know, I guess that white stuff just represents ash and stuff burning off the inside. Let's scrub it a little bit more and then take it in the house and wash it. I'm heating it up on my stove right now to dry the water out of it. It wasn't as thorough as I would have liked, um, but I've learned quite a bit here uh, by knowing that what I should do is turn it around when it's about halfway done because this part was at the front and didn't get burned. The rest of this except for this part that was at the back that didn't get as hot. Um, the rest of it was is kind of like new again, totally cleaned off. So I'll do this again one of these days 
not tomorrow or anything, but uh, I'd like to get the rest of that part off there. But for now, I have to re-season my stove. My for now, I have to re-season my pan again. And what I'll do that with is lard. I'll just keep putting lard on there and heating it and and keep putting lard on it and eventually lard will season it. It's the best seasoning material that I believe there is. You'll hear a lot of different things but I'm just going to tell you my opinion is lard is the best. So I almost have a new pan and I'm really glad I did what I did and I hope you learned how to take care of your skillet too by watching what I did with mine and burning it inside my wood stove. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.